ladies and gentlemen you're welcome to yet another tutorial today we're going to demonstrate how to create patterns for chelsea boots first thing you do you have to find a way to stick your last to a piece of paper um what i did is to roll masking tape on themselves and then just glue it onto the last and then onto the paper then you are going to try to generate what we call a last copy which is you trying to trace out the dimensions of the last trying to maintain um, the feather edge and then on the back and van area um, trying to estimate where the middle is <clears throat> you really don't need to um, have an accurate representation because we will deal with all the other imperfections um, as we go along so um, you double up the paper so that there is another piece of paper appearing on top of the one that you have the last placed on and then you fully trace out your last copy so this is my last copy um, typically when i shoot these videos i like to use um, small baby lasts just so that i don't waste a lot of materials especially if this is a shoe that no one has ordered and I'm just shooting the video for education purposes. Um, so having cut out um, along the lines of the last copy, you will um, tape it up at the back and also at the vamp area. So you tape it, you cut some notches on the tape, flip the entire thing over, and then um, bring the tape back in. This way, um, you are trying to generate a three-dimensional <clears throat> um, representation of these two-dimensional paper here. So you cut the vamp area as well and do exactly the same thing. You just um, tape it up along the lines. Um, there it is, so you tape up. You cut your notches once again and fold it back in place. This um, style um, enables you not to waste a lot of masking tape, taping out the entire last. And it also gives the advantage of being able to remove um, the paper that you have used to generate the last copy and then draw and design on it. This way also you're able to get both the inside and the outside part of the last with which you can generate a mean form. Of course, you can do exactly the same thing with masking tape, but masking tape is expensive. Paper, on the other hand, is very cheap, so we use this method. Now, I've managed to rip up the front part of my last copy, but I would um, solve that problem by deploying masking tape. The first thing is to secure the last copy on the body of the last um, trying as much as you can to ensure that you have perfect last profile that it fits the last exactly it fits the last as much as possible um, just the way you would want your shoe to appear in if it was leather so you use masking tape to secure this thing on top of the last and then this area that got ripped open while we were um, sketching and designing we will correct by deploying masking tape to cover it up so we we'll perform some surgery to this thing cover it up and then we can go ahead and just um, trace out 
the different parts of our shell support. Now this boot um, should be ankle length. I didn't factor that in when I was uh, generating the last copy. So I'm just going to correct that error right here and add some height to it for where the ankle part of the Chelsea boot is going to be. So using a piece of paper, I'll just glue it onto the last. And having done that, it was just a matter of um, designing the boot drawing out tracing out various components i'm not really using any geometrical um standards or anything i'm just eyeballing things and um, estimating where each part should be um, if you have an eye for design this is easy peasy stuff for you it's not really going to be a problem um next thing to do is to mark out the feather edge the feather having um, accurately marked out feather edge is very very important um, for generating the mean form which is the next step that we're going to go into once we are concluded with um, releasing the last copy off of the last itself So very, very carefully release the last copy from the last. Comes out, as you can see, it fits the last very well. So we're just going to fold it into two. By the time you folded it into halves, you find that the inside part, especially on the um, vamp and mid sections is quite shorter than the, the outside part. So the first thing we need to do is to trace out that inside part on a clean piece of paper. Remember that I said that the front part of the shoe will typically be shorter. So we mark that out. Next thing will be to cut out this inside part and keep it. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Inside part. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing on the outside part. We're going to trace it out on a plain piece of paper but in addition to just tracing it out like we did with the inside part of the last we are also going to transfer um, our design elements onto it Cut that out like we did to the inside part. Now it's time to generate the mean form. The mean form is basically um, an average of the dimensions of the outside and the inside parts. So you calculate the um, the length of each and then find the average between the two and how that is done is not by any um, geeky math all you need to do is to trace out on a piece of paper the inside part I traced out with pencil this outside part I will trace out with a pen so we have both the inside and the outside part of the last copy represented here so we'll find the mean which is the average by marking the middle um, parts between where each falls
Now that we have um, generated the mean form, the next thing we'll do is to um, straighten out our lines, ensure that our curves are perfect, just basic um, things that make for perfection in your work. Of course, we transfer the design elements onto the mean form itself and then clean up everything else. Once we're done with um, adding all of the details um, and ensuring that all parts have been traced out on the main form, the next thing to do will be to um, transfer the main form onto a cardboard piece of paper from where we will generate um, all other pieces of this pattern well the way I have chosen to go about this pattern is that I really do not have to cut out pattern pieces I could just use the mean form which appears on a cardboard and um, get things done so we're just basically trying to clean up all of the design elements ensure that things are parallel where they should be um, and the curves are well um, designed where they also should be so just add like 2cm lasting allowance even though i think that is actually quite too much one and a half inches more like so we trace the main form with the design elements on top of a cardboard piece of paper after we do that, we are going to cut notches to that cardboard piece of paper and then with that we will generate our patterns on a piece of leather. so that's our main form with the design elements on cardboard right now is to cut the notches along the different design lines so that it will be easy to trace out on a piece of leather So you trace out on a piece of leather like we said before So we trace out on leather, add stitching allowances to the vamp. We would also add stitching allowances um, where the vamps are joined to themselves. Once we cut out the pattern pieces, it will just simply be a matter of stitching and we will be on our way to celebration.
So I'll take these to the sewing machine at the moment and stitch them up. And then we will get back to finish off the video. So we stitched the back side and the front seam. Now it's time to add the elastic um, and also add, stitch it to the stitching allowance. So from that main form, you can also um, generate the pattern for the elastic itself. Once um, you've gotten to this stage, everything else is like autopilot. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the final result. This is what we have. You can see that seam in front, um, but it lasts excellently, no problems, no obvious protrusion at the back. So there we go. A suede Chelsea boot. If you've not already done that, please do like, share this video, drop us a comment, and we'll be happy to respond. Thank you.